do that. This is due diligence here. And in this video, we're going to talk about options. But before I say anything, here's the disclaimer. We're not financial advisors. Therefore, we do not give financial advices. And everything we say on this channel is for entertainment purposes only. So let's get you into it. So I always have non-believers trying to tell me that I am all wrong and shit, you know? But first of all, I ain't no prophet, okay? At least not that I'm aware of right now. Maybe I have just a tiny little bit of a God complex and a savior complex. I mean, why else would I start a YouTube channel trying to educate you guys on how the complex financial system actually works, right? That's a lot of work. And for those of you who just want to see the results and asking how credible I am, duh, you figured it out, bud. Well, here are some of my option contract results. Well, nothing really that crazy. Sometimes a couple thousand percent returns. Sometimes, you know, we cash out at around 50%, 20%, which I still think it's, it's a quite low number. But as a risk averse asshole to the teeth, I'd rather miss out a huge 50% upside occasionally than fail to reap a 5% profit consistently every day, 24-7, 365. And don't get me wrong here, okay? Options are risky. Thus, I also see some reds, okay? Like when I decided to short a NASDAQ in the past week with $27 per 100 share minimum downside, and now, since the media isn't willing to cover any significant bad news for tech, the tech giants and for the majority of the companies in NASDAQ, including Tesla, sorry, I'm just a little bit salty, okay? I already lost about a couple hundred bucks during the process. I also lost a couple hundred bucks due to the timing when I decided to go long on Oil Weekly <clears throat> as Jay Powell our special friend, our great friend, the, the chairman of the Fed, announced positive inflation outlook back in early June, right? And guess what? If I could have just rolled my options or bought it for two weeks instead of one week, I could have made at least 15 to 20 percent. But hey, a lot of the times you will be right. But when all forces against you, time is your only amigo and maybe your only enemy at this point. Also, by the way. Buying weekly option contracts is ultra risky. It's like, you know she's gonna get pregnant in high school if you keep going on like this, but you just refuse to put a rubber on. That's very irresponsible. But hey, sometimes we're just gamblers of life. Anyways, this is not a reflection video, nor is it an advanced option guide. This video is more catered to all of you who are new to options, for the ones, or you know, for the ones who think that they're going to be the next option gods on Wall Street Bats. Well, for those of you who are curious about how did I get into options, let's just say that personally, I think options are one of the easiest financial tools we can utilize and profit from if I don't A, have a gambling addiction from time to time, and if I decided to spend more time doing option pricing model calculations rather than doing intense DD work for you guys. Yeah, it's basically function similar to buying your ticket to heaven from the church back in the 1600s. But keep in mind though, I just recently started actually trading options using real money. And beforehand, I studied under my kind, omnipotent, beautiful, fantastic mentor for at least one and a half years. Plus, I do have a pretty outside of two standard deviation IQ. So, if you just started out investing with less than 20k and decided to go straight into options, mate, good luck. And Robinhood will probably be the only brokerage firms that will ever allow this to happen, by the way. And enough of me trying to be a wise man and give you guys some interesting prospects of my life, let's just get into the option basics. So what are options? Simply put, options are contracts that are forward-looking and allow you to buy or sell an underlying security for a certain price during a period of time. Okay? There are two big types of options. One is buying options and the other is selling options. Buying an option gives you the right to buy or sell a security but not an obligation to do so before your expiration date. 
and selling an option give you the obligation to buy or sell a security if the buyer chooses to use their right on the purchased options. You see, buying or selling is essentially you have a buyer, you have a seller, and buyer does the exact opposite of the seller because seller offers the options for the buyers, okay? And for all of curious cats out there, right, you're gonna ask, what is an obligation and what is a right? Rights are like privileges. I know it's a very politically correct and politically charged word here, but we're just using the basic Oxford Dictionary definition for that word. So basically, rights are privileges and you know you have it, you feel safe with it, but you can choose not to use them, okay? For example, you have your voting rights, right? But you can choose not to use or exercise them during an election. That's exactly what happened during the previous elections where the, there's only literally one third of voters actually voted and two thirds of the voters choose not to vote. Or if your wife decided to give you a whole pass to engage in sexual intercourse with your smoking hob babysitter, of course, with consent, right? And you, at that point, can choose to use it or remain faithful. Quote unquote, because if you're already in that situation, I don't know what's going on anymore. And again, I am also not a marriage therapist, so if such intriguing, fantastic, male dreaming things happen to you, use the whole past at your own risk, guys. And women are much more complicated than options or anything else in this world for that matter, therefore, treat this video with caution, considered that we're both not woman experts. Obligations are more like have tos, okay? Means that you're forced to perform such action because it's bounded by law. In this case, options are like a contractual law. You're bounded by the contractual law to purchase or to sell the security at a certain price because you've already sent out the contract to your buyers and your buyer decided to buy them and decided to exercise them, okay? So, you can buy or sell two types of options, more like two main types of options, okay? We're not talking about covered calls, covered puts, or all these kind of things, because everything eventually go back to two main things, okay? A call or a put. For the purpose of this video, you just need to know that a call is something dealing with the rights or the obligation to buy a security, and a put is dealing with the rights or the obligation of selling a security. For instance, right, buying a call. Call deal with buying. In your head, you're like, call deal with buying. And you are the buyer of this call, thus you will have the rights to purchase X amount of shares at Y price before the exploration date of this contract. Clear? And on the opposite side, by selling a call, in your mind, you're going to be like, call deal with buying, and you're the seller of this call, and because you're selling for someone to be able to buy in this case, therefore, you will have the obligation to sell X amount of shares at Y price if the buyer of the call option choose to exercise her rights to buy it from you before the expiration date of this contract. Clear? How long is this video now? Let me just do the example for puts, and then you guys will need to wait for the next video for some real-life simple example of either sell or buy an option with a real stock ticker. Uh, for the purpose of the next video, we will either use MMAT or I will just pick some random stock ticker that, you know, I did minor due diligence and just laying out some risk and rewards for you guys, I guess. And I think by the end of this video, you already have the most, most, most basic understanding of how rudimentarily option work. All right, let's get put out of the way. When you buy a put, a deal with selling, okay? In your head, you're like, a deal with selling. And if you are the buyer of this put, that means you are the buyer of a selling right. Thus, you will have the right to sell X amount of shares of a security at a given price before the expiration date of that contract. And on the contrary, by selling a put, it will give you an obligation. And when you sell a put, you know how you're like, mm, selling, the put is, is, some, is dealing with selling, right? So you're selling 
a selling right, so your corresponding obligation will be to buy the shares of the buyers of this option. Okay? Thus, you will have the obligation to buy X amount of shares of a security at a given price before the exploration date of this contract. Alright lads, there's a lot of things to digest, and this is it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna give real life examples and talk a little bit about time aka one of the most sophisticated part of options. Well, actually, it's one of the two sophisticated parts of the option. Maybe three, there are other situation you have to, to think about. But just like how I love a sophisticated woman in a sophisticated bottle of Chateau Latte, understanding sophistication will lend you not only potential great sex and love life, but also some precious unrealized financial upsides. All right, boys and girls, children of all age, moms and dads, wife and husbands, Every single one of you should smash that like button so then we can beat the YouTube algorithm so that more and more people can enjoy our beautiful and great content. And for those of you who haven't subbed yet, please sub 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 and spread the great news of DD, the DD channel, and the teachings of the DD channel. Alright, see you guys on the upside.